a last day, the day of resurrection, and everybody will be judged. They all believe in that. And also they believe, just like we believe, that uh, there are great events which will have to happen during or before that last day uh, comes. They also believe that. Uh, that is why the Christians, they have the book called the Book of Revelations. Right? They have the book called the Book of Revelations, part of their Bible, which all talks about what we know as Ashratu Sa'a, the things to happen before the, the, the last day. Even though you find there in any yani, things which, which are completely wrong, uh, like any other parts of the Bible which has been changed, humans have edited it. But my, my point is, all the other religions also, they believe that. Uh, so in Islam, it's one of the, one of the six fundamental um, beliefs or, or pillars of Iman, belief. The first one, the first chapter, yani, it's called Ashratu Sa'a, the signs of the Day of Judgment. Uh, and first, the Sheikh, he mentioned a hadith which should talk generally, generally about the, the Day of Judgment, the signs. The signs. The signs of Day of Judgment, there are many. There are many. Yani. You can count over yani, a hundred. And we know they're divided into the, the minor ones and the major signs. The minor ones come before. The major signs are those which happen just before the Day of Judgment. Those are the major ones. Those ones, when they happen, you know now it is very, very near. Now, Bismillah. Bismillah. Hadathana Muhammad bin Muthanna wa ibn Bashari qala hadathana Muhammad bin Ja'far. Hadathana Shubatu, Shubatu sami'atu qatarata yuhadithu an Anasim bin Malik. قال لا أحدثكم حديثا سمعته من رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يحدثكم أحد بعدي سمعه من إن من أشراط الساعة أن يرفع العلم ويظهر ويظهر الجهل ويفشو الزنا ويشرب الخمر ويذهب الرجال وتبقى النساء حتى يكون لخمسين امرأة قيم واحد من أشراط الساعة البروفيس صلى الله عليه وسلم يسيزي in min ashrat al-sa'a surely from the signs of the hour surely from the signs of the hour is number one an yurfa'u or yurfa'a al-ilm that knowledge will be taken away knowledge will be taken away and we say knowledge means knowledge of islam the knowledge of islam and the opposite obviously will happen which is what number two wa yakthur al-jahlu and ignorance will be prevalent. Ignorance will be prevalent. Knowledge will be taken away, become scarce. Uh, and ignorance will be prevalent. Ignorance will be prevalent. And subhanAllah, if we ask ourselves, has this happened or not? The answer will be what? Yes. Yes, you find many Muslims, uh, and it is very sad. It is very sad. They don't know the basics of Islam. They don't know the basics of Islam. It is one of the signs of the hour. You have to know something. When the Prophet ﷺ says, these are the signs of the hour. Number one, you have to understand, not everything which is called a sign of the hour is bad. It doesn't necessarily mean that. It just means when we're going to the end of the world, these are the things which are happening. Number two though, even though we say not everything is bad, most of the things though are bad. Most of the things, because remember the hadith we read during Fajr here. Anas bin Malik, he said what? The Prophet Sallallahu said, there will no, there's no error which comes, except that the error which follows it, the generation which follows it will become worse. As time goes by, people, they become worse. So obviously most of these signs, they, they are bad things. They're not so good things. Number three, you'll find them, there are events which people sometimes, they don't even take notice of. They're happening. They're happening, but people don't even take notice of them. Like this, that knowledge will be taken away and jahal ignorance will be prevalent in the Islamic community. It's not like people are doing it intentionally. You understand? But it is something which has happened. 
Now the prophet says, when that happens, then no, this is one of the signs of the hour. This is one of the signs of the hour. Hamza, they say the mic is low in the sister's side. Next, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, and I wish someone would 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 number these, would number them so by the end we know how many they are, the different ones. So number one. Number one, knowledge will be reason, will be taken away, will be scarce. Number two, ignorance will prevail. Number three, وَيَكْثُرْ الزِّنَا Adultery, fornication will become common, become so much. If you ask ourselves again, is this happening now or not? What will be the answer? People are doing it openly. They're making commercials for it. Number four. The Prophet says, uh, الخمر, And the drinking of alcohol becomes prevalent also. Rare. Today it is rare to find a country which bans alcohol. Not the opposite. It is rare to find a country which bans alcohol. When before, it will be rare to find a country which allows alcohol. Before, it will be rare to find people who drink alcohol openly. No. Because all religions also don't, eh, don't condone drinking of alcohol. You understand? And you see, they say, they say, some of them, they say the most successful ads, commercials, are those of alcohol. And they are the most expensive ones. Number five. And the number of men will become less. The number of men will become less وَيَقِلَّ الرِّجَالِ in, in the Riwayah of Bukhar Men will become less وَيَكْثُرَ nisa, And the women will become more To the point حَتَّى يَكُونَ لِخَمْسِينَ أَمْرَأَةً الْقَيِّمُ الْوَاحِدِ To the point uh, There will be one man to look after 50 women That is one of the signs of the owls When the number of men will become reduced and there'll be more women than men. To the point the ratio will be one to one to fifty. Imagine. Now the scholars they asked, how will this happen? Who knows the answer? How will this happen? Does it mean men will be taken away? That's that just disappear one day? No, how will this happen? Not just a war, all the wars you see right now. Who is fighting in the wars? It's men. You understand? It's men. Like we'll read from the other signs of the hour. Waqthul qatl, killing will become prevalent, and those who are killed mostly will be men. You understand? So these are signs, some of the signs of the hour. Now, what is the benefit for us knowing this? What is the benefit? Once you read this, and then we ask ourselves questions, is this happening or not? Say, this is happening already. It should tell you, it's time to get close to Allah. That's the, that's the benefit. It is time to get close to Allah. Because things are reaching the end now. It is time to get close to Allah. Naam. Haddathan Abu Yaman. Haddathan Abu Yaman. Qala akhbaran shu'aib. قال أخبرنا أبو الزناد عن عبد الرحمن الأعرج عن أبي هريرة قال قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لا تقوم الساعة حتى يقبض العلم وتكثر الزلزال أو الزلزال يقارب الزمان وتظهر الفتن ويكثر الهرج وهو القتل القتل حتى يكثر فيكم المال فيفيض This حديث of Abu Hurairah 
the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says, uh, "La taqumu saa the hour will not be established until what? Hatta yuqbadu al-ilm until religious knowledge will be taken away. How is the religious knowledge taken away? Bi qabdil ulama by the great scholars passing away. By the great scholars passing away. When they become fewer and fewer, knowledge becomes less and less." So, how many signs are those now? Six? We already mentioned that though. We already mentioned that. Right? We mentioned knowledge being taken away. So, it's still five. Right? Next, وَتَكْثُرَ الزَّلَازِلُ وَتَكْثُرَ الزَّلَازِلُ And earthquakes will be frequent. Earthquakes will be frequent in the in the world before an earthquake would be something of great news great news throughout the world that an earthquake happened somewhere it would be of great news but today even you see it on the news you just pass by it it became common it became common this is one of the signs of the hour and the earthquakes will become frequent in the world so how many do you have now? Six. وَيَتَقَارَبُ zaman And time will pass quickly. Time will pass quickly. As we speak, like I said before, in the evening. As we speak right now. You will not experience another time like this in Ramadan of this year. There will not be another Sunday night of Ramadan. This is the last one. For you to realize how time has passed quickly. The next Sunday night for us is surely Eid. It is surely Eid. There's no other Sunday night which is coming. And time will pass quickly. Subhanallah. All of us remember. We were here last Ramadan. Like this time, studying Kitab Tawheed. Now this year, we're studying Kitab Al-Iman. وَتَقَارَبُ zaman, And time will pass quickly. Time will pass quickly. How many are those now? Seven. وَتَظْهَرُ fitan, And the fitan will appear. The afflictions. Fitan is plural of fitna. Fitna is a trial. A test, a calamity, an affliction which happens and people are tried. You know, something major, something great which happens. Let them do their job, you focus here. وَتَكْثُرُ fitan, وَتَظْهُرُ fitan. The fitan appear. We see them now. A lot of fitan. And the fitan can mean those which you are tried with personally. Personally. Or the Muslims are tried as an ummah. Next, وَيَكْثُرُ الْهَرْجُ وَيَكْثُرُ الْهَرْجُ And the harj will increase. And because they will not understand the meaning of harj, the Prophet ﷺ said to, him, said to them, Do you know what is harj? قَالَ الْقَتْلُ الْقَتْلُ مَادَ مَادَ Blood, blood. وَلِيَذَمْ بِاللَّهِ Blood Isn't that what is happening today? Killing and shedding of blood has become something easy, very easy. You know, very easy. It doesn't shake people anymore that someone got killed. No. It doesn't shake people anymore that a whole village got wiped away. وَيَكْثُرُ الْهَرْجِ حَتَّى يَكْثُرَ فِيكُمُ الْمَالِ فَيَفِيضِ Until there will come a moment, there will be a lot of money amongst you which will overflow. That is one of the signs of the hour. This is yet to happen. But it will reach a time. And the other hadith will show. There will be a lot of money which will overflow. People won't, won't even bother about money though that time. Because they will realize when that happened, now it is the end. As the Prophet ﷺ, he said, 
that time, another hadith will come and say, that time, one sajda will be more beloved to the believer than having a cow. How much is a cow worth? How much is a cow worth? Who knows? Around a thousand dollars. A thousand dollars and making one sajda. You would prefer one sajda. Of not even the obligatory prayer. It will reach that time. Imagine. This is what, these are the signs of the, of the hour. Naam, haddathana umayya. Haddathana umayya to bin bistami in Aishiyu. Haddathana Yazid bin Zurai. Haddathana Shu'ba. An qadalata anin hasani. An ziyad bin riyahin. عن أبي هريرة عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال بادروا بالأعمال ستة الدجال والدخان ودابة الأرض وطلوع الشمس من مغربها وأمر العامة وخويصية وخويصة أحدكم. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم says بادر الأعمال ستة rush to do good deeds before six things happen. Rush to do good deeds before six things happen. What are these six things? Ad Dajjal. And these ones mentioned in this hadith are the major signs now. The other ones are the minor signs. These are the major ones. These ones are the ones which the world is at the end. Ad Dajjal. Number two, Ad Dukhan. There will be a great smoke which will cover the whole world. A smoke which will cover the whole world. ad dukhan Number three, Wadabatil Ard. The beast which will come out from the earth, as Allah mentions in the Quran, it will speak to the people. To kallimun nas. This beast and animal will speak. What will he say to the people? Anna nasa kanu bi ayatina la yuqinun. That you people. You did not have certainty in Allah's words. Now it's come to an end. The appearance of the beast. We don't need that. The beast. Number four. الشَّمْسِ مِنْ مَغْرِبِهَا When the sun shall rise from the west. Every day it rises from the east. That day it will rise from the west. Number five. وَأَمْرِ الْعَامَّ The thing which will cover everyone. In the translation they say to you, the death of masses. That is not the translation. أَمْرِ الْعَامَّ is the hour which will take everyone. The last day, the last blow of the horn which will take everyone. Or, maybe you'll say, maybe ah, that is too far. وَخُوَيْ يَسَتَ أَحَدِكُمْ Or, the death of you yourself. Rush to do good deeds before these things happen. If you think, oh, these five, they are very far. Then there's the sixth, which is what? Your own last day. You have to know there's two last days. The last day for everyone. And then there's the last day for yourself, for each individual. Rush to do good deeds before that day comes. Before that day comes. This hadith is supposed to push us. To be better Muslims. For us to push ourselves. Especially in these blessed days. Like we said they're not coming back. They're not coming back. Who knows if you're going to be. If you're going to be alive or I'm going to be alive to next Ramadan. Who knows. Naam. حدثنا أبو خيثمة زهير بن حرب وإسحاق بن إبراهيم وابن أبي عمر المكي واللفظ لزهير قال إسحاق أخبرنا وقال الآخران حدثنا سفيان بن عينة عن فرات قزاز عن أبي الطفيل حذيفة بن أسير الغفاري قال اطلع النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم علينا ونحن نتذاكر فقال ما تذاكرون قالوا نذكر الساعة قال إنها لن تقوم حتى ترون قبلها عشر آيات فذكر الدخان والدجال والدابة وطلوع الشمس من مغربها ونزول عيسى بن مريم صلى الله عليه وسلم ويأجوج ومأجوج وثلاثة خسوف خسف بالمشرق وخسف بالمغرب وخسف بجزيرة العرب وآخر ذلك Unless ten things happen first The hour 
will not happen until ten things happen first. What are these ten things? Number one, we mentioned these before, we'll mention again. Uh, the smoke, the dukhan, the smoke which will cover the people. The smoke which will cover the people. Number two, he mentioned, uh, I mean, the Dajjal. The Dajjal. Number three. Adabba. The beast of the earth. Number four. The sun rising from the west. Number five. Nuzula Isa ibn Maryam. We have not mentioned that. The descending, the coming back of Isa, the son of Maryam. Alayhim as salatu as salam. Number six, Ya'juja wa Ma'juj, the coming out of the Ya'juja wa Ma'juj. Number seven, Thalatha Khusufin, there'll be three landslides, they call them landslides in English. Even though landslide, it could be the meaning or not. Like in Khasf, Al Khasf in Arabic is when the earth swallows people. Whether it is a landslide, or sometimes it just cracks and this becomes a big hole. That is the khasf. You understand? There will be three of them. Three major ones. One in the east, one in the west, and one in the Ar Arabian Peninsula. Number eight. This is the ten. Sorry, those are, those are three different ones. Those are seven, eight, and nine. And number ten is the fire which will come out from Yemen and it will spread throughout the whole world so that people will run away from the fire and knowingly or unknowingly it will take them to one place and that is where they'll be resurrected. The hour will not happen until these things happen. You understand? Now, We mentioned the coming down of Isa ibn Maryam. There's other hadith we'll mention. We'll talk about them when we mention it there. Or we talk about it now. Let's read. Naqra. Naqra. Naam. The next hadith. Naam. Haddathani Uba Abdullah ibn Muhammad. Haddathani Abdullah ibn Muhammad. Haddathani Abdul Razak. Akhbarana Ma'amar an Hammamin an Abi Hurairat radiyallahu anhu anin Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal la taqumu sa'atu hatta يقتتل فئتان فيكون بينهما مقتلة عظيمة دعواهما واحدة ولا تقوم الساعة حتى يبعث الدجالون كذابون قريبا من ثلاثين كلهم يزعم أنه رسول الله The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم says this is another sign of the hour the hour will not be established until there is a great war between two groups of which these two groups hmm? it will be a great war a great war with a lot of casualties what is strange is that they are called they are called these two groups their call is the same their call is the same Yet there will be a great war between them. That is what number? Number what? That is number 20. Number 21. وَلَا تَقُومُ السَّاعَةَ And the hour will not be established. حَتَّى يُبْعَثَ دَجَّالُونَ كَذَّابُونَ قَرِيبًا مِنْ ثَلَاثِينَ Until there appear about 30 liars. 30 liars. كُلُّهُمْ يَزْعُمُ أَنَّهُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ all of them claiming that he is a messenger of Allah. Another narration the Prophet is saying, Wa ana khatimu al anbiya Wa al the last one. That is number 21. The appearance of almost 30 liars, 30 false prophets. If you count them, you can reach 30 or even more. And this number is not intended by itself. 
It says close to 30. So it could be less, it could be more. The false prophets. It's one of the signs of the hour. Those people who come to claim prophethood. Well, the Prophet ﷺ says, I'm the last prophet. Who can mention some? Musaylim al kadhab and subhanallah. Some of them appeared while the Prophet was still alive. They claim prophethood. Musaylim al kadhab was then killed and who? Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani. Uh, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani, the founder of the Qadianis or the Ahmadiyyas, they call themselves, who claimed he's a prophet also. Another one, Jim Jones, who claimed he was a prophet. And then he killed and committed suicide with all of his followers. Yes, he killed, he killed all of his followers. Uh, followers. Yeah, in, a, in the Johnstown murder, whatever they call it. Right? Another one? Elijah Muhammad, the founder of the so called Black, uh, what do you call Nation of Islam. Nation of Islam. Most of them are in America, claiming he's a prophet. Another one? Al Aswad al Anasi, who used to be during the time of the Prophet, also, and after. He claimed he was a prophet. And another one, <coughs> Tulayha. Tulayha was a woman and she was married to <coughs> Musaylim al kadhab She claimed she was a prophet. Another one, who knows another one? Many people have come out and claimed they are prophets. <coughs> who? The Qadr Jailani? The Qadr Jailani never claimed he's a prophet. You understand? But this is one of the signs of the hour. And it continues. It continues. Naam. Haddathana ibn Abi Umar al-Makki. Haddathana Marwan an Yazid. Wahu ibn Kaysana. An Abi Hazim an Abi Hurayrata. Qala al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. والذي نفسي بيده لا يأتي أن على الناس زمان لا يدري القاتل في أي شيء قتل ولا يدري المقتول على أي شيء قتل. We mention the hadith that there'll be a lot of killing, a lot of murders. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم here he says there'll come a time for the people uh, when the murderer does not know why he committed the murder and the one who was killed does not know why he was killed. The one who killed does not know why is he killing these people. And the one who got killed does not know why, am I, why did I get killed. And you see it. You see it today. Rather you saw it 10 years ago. Since the American invention, uh, invasion of, of Afghanistan and Iraq. Some of those soldiers who left, they say what? They have the same story. Huh? They say what? Say what are we doing here? I don't know why am I fighting. What am I fighting for? And he has killed already. The killer does not know why, he's kill was he, why is he killing. And the killed don't have no reason to be killed. Subhanallah. It is one of the signs of the hour. And it is scary. It is something very scary. That human blood has become very cheap and nothing like nothing. It doesn't matter. They just put a term on you. You are just collateral damage. Khalas. That's it. You understand? Human blood has become so cheap. Whether it is Muslim, Christian, Hindu, whatever it is. Killing is one of the greatest sins. Greatest sins. But it has become so common, people don't even know why they are killing. They don't know why. It's one of the signs of the hour. Now. And things will continue to become difficult. Things will continue to become difficult. Things will become hard on this earth. As we said, the Prophet ﷺ said, No time comes except that it is worse than that which was before it. To the point it will become like this. Listen to this hadith. 
حدثنا إسماعيل حدثني مالك عن أبي زناد عن الأعرج عن أبي هريرة عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال لا تقوم الساعة حتى يمر الرجل بقبر الرجل فيقول يا ليتني مكانه The hour will not be established The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم says Until a man passes by a grave of somebody A man who's alive He passes by a grave And he says يا ليتني مكانه I wish I was in his position I wish I was dead like him That is how tough life on this earth will become Fitan, fitan and the only way to save yourself is to get close to Allah, like we said. A man who is walking on this earth, this love, uh, this world of the, this life of the world, which we love so much today, everybody hates death. Everybody dislikes death. When death is mentioned, you say, "Why are we mentioning death?" That day or those times, everyone will wish he was in that place. Subhanallah. Naam. عن أبي هريرة أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال لا تقوم الساعة حتى يقاتل المسلمون اليهود فيقتله فيقتله المسلمون حتى يختبئ اليهودي من وراء الحجر والشجر فيقول الحجر أو الشجر يا مسلم يا عبد الله هذا يهودي خلفي فتعال فاقتله إلا الغرقد فإنه من شجر اليهود The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم يرحمك الله He says from the signs of the hour is when the Muslims will fight against the Jews to the point that the Jews who will come out with the Dajjal they will come out with the Dajjal as his followers and when Isa ibn Maryam because the Sheikh did not he did not uh, arrange this hadith in order but this is when Isa ibn Maryam goes out with the Muslims to fight the Dajjal whose main followers will be the Jews and others to the point that they will be hiding behind the trees it says here uh, the last hour will not come unless the Muslims will fight against the Jews and the Muslims will kill them until the Jews would hide themselves behind a stone or a tree. And that stone or that tree will say, Ya Abdullah, Ya Muslim, O servant of Allah, O Muslim, this is, this is a Jew behind me. They will talk. Illa al except the tree which is called uh, Al Gharqad or Al Ghirqid. In English, I don't know the exact name. It is the cactus? No, it's not a cactus. It's not a cactus. It could be a, 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 from, the fam from the cacti family, maybe. But it's not the cactus. This tree, subhanallah, subhanallah. If you search Ghirqid on Google, you'll find it, they have a massive plantation program for it in the so-called country of Israel. I'm telling you, go search. Ghirqid. What is it called in English? Huh? What? Garak? Mm, it says Garak here. But you'll be surprised. They have that. They know. The Yahud know the truth. Alhamdulillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الَّذِينَ آتِيْنَاهُمُ الْكِتَابَ يَعْرِفُونَهُ كَمَا يَعْرِفُونَ أَبْنَاءَهُمْ Those who gave them the book, those about the Jews, they know him, Muhammad, just like they know their own children. You think they don't know the truth? They know him, Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, just like how you, you have children? You have children. Okay, who has children here? The way you know your children, the parent knowing the children, you know him as we say, inside out. That is how much they know. Okay, he is the truth. He is the one who was mentioned in the Torah. He'll come. Ismuhu Ahmad. This is the one. فَلَمَّا جَاءَهُمْ When he came to them, they said what? They said, no, you're only, you're only for the Arabs. You're only for the Arabs. Because this was the chosen prophet. Every prophet who came, they spoke about the chosen one, the last one. The last one who was the greatest prophet. And the Yahud, they used to tell the, the Arabs who are mushrikun, worshipping idols. They used to say to them, what? Wait until that prophet comes of ours. We will kill you Arabs, all of you. وَكَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ يَسْتَفْتِحُونَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ 
Kafaru. Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah, read the Quran and understand it. That's our problem. We don't read our own book. وَكَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ Before, they used to say, يَسْتَفْتِحُونَ They used to seek victory over the disbelievers of the Arabs. يَسْتَفْتِحُونَ Meaning they're seeking victory. They're saying to them, wait until he comes, our chosen one. فَلَمَّا جَاءَهُمْ When he came to them, and they discovered, subhanAllah, he's one of the Arabs, not from the Jews. Kafaru, they, they disliked him. No, we won't believe. We won't believe. We have some of them who know the knowledge of hadith more than most Muslim scholars. I'm not saying Muslim public, me and you, Muslim scholars. People of this who've been studying the science of hadith for 50 years in their universities. I was reading one of the articles, one of them. Uh, he was talking. And he was talking about the status of Sheikh Al-Albani. Dr. Yahudiya, the PhD holder, he's been studying hadith for 30, 40 years. We are the ones who are sleeping. Everybody else is awake. We are sleeping. Everybody else is awake. You have to know that. You have to know that. We call people, come. Every Friday, just come learn your religion on Friday. Bring your children. Nobody wants to come. Nobody wants to come. Okay, do it in your house. You don't want to do it in your house. What do you expect then? What do you expect? People who are non-Muslims, they know our religion more than us. It's a shame. It's a shame. But they know it. I can tell you that they know more than us. More than us. Huh? And that is why they're not Muslims. That's why they're not Muslims. They still don't follow, obviously. That's what Allah says. They know him just like they know their own sons. They know him just like they know their own sons. But they didn't follow him because of the kibr. Why he's not, he, didn't, he didn't come from the Jewish tribes. He came from the Arabs. You understand? Hmm? It looks from the cacti family. You know, but there is an English name for it. Waxthorn? Boxthorn? Mm. Naam. Iqra al ba'da. We have to learn our religion. We have to learn our religion. That is the key for us to becoming good Muslims. You have to know that. That is the key for us to becoming good Muslims. The enemy is those who don't like Islam. They study Islam not because they want to believe. They study Islam so that they can attack Islam from inside. That is their point. And this is not something new. You had the Orientalist movement of the early 1900s. Those who went and studied Islam and then even translated the Quran, some of them, into English. The first person to translate the Quran into English was not a Muslim. You have to know that. The first translation of the Quran from Arabic to English was not done by Muslims. That tells you how much we have we are doing. It tells you how much. Nam nam iqra. An Abi Huraira radi Allah anhu qala qala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alayhi salatu salam. لا تقوم الساعة حتى يكثر فيكم المال فيفيض حتى يهم رب المال من يقبل صدقته وحتى يعرضه فيقول الذي يعرضه عليه لا أرب لي. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم says, the hour will not be established until your wealth increases so much so that one will be worried. You have so much wealth that you are worried. Who will accept my zakah? And when you go out to give it to someone, the person says, La Araba, La Arabali Fihi. Or La Arabali. I have no need of your money. I could say, This is yet to happen. But this will happen. When people, they will come, then their main concern will be not wealth anymore, is to get close to Allah. Our problem. Our problem, we wait until things become difficult. Then we go back to Allah. That is our problem. We sleep until we get whipped. 
Once we get whipped, we wake up and we go to Allah when things now are difficult. Yes, things are difficult now. Mm. Now, yes. And they say also, yeah, this, this happened already during the time of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. Uh, when it was a time when there was a lot of wealth and everyone was happy and wealthy that no one was, you couldn't even find a poor person. Like in Allah A'lam, it will happen again during the time of Isa ibn Maryam after he comes back. After he comes back. You don't have this one. Of Muslim. حتى تعود أرض العرب أرض العرب مروجا وأنهارا. The hour will not be established until the lands of the Arabs go back to be what? مروجا green gardens وأنهارا and full of rivers. The Arabian whatever you call it Middle East Arabian Peninsula. It will go back to be green. And full of rivers, be full of life. And this is happening, by the way. This is happening. There are places where 20, 50 years ago nothing would grow. Now there's things which are growing there. Full fledged farms. Farms. This is happening. Naham. أخبرني أبو هريرة أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قام قال لا تقوم الساعة حتى تخرج نار من أرض الحجاز تضيء أعناق الإبل ببصرة. The hour will not be established until there's a fire which comes out from Hijaz. Hijaz is present day uh, Saudi Arabia. Until a fire comes out from Hijaz and it will be a great fire. Such that the camels which are passing in Busra, Busra is Sham today, Sham today, Syria. Such that the camels which are in Busra, eh, they'll be illuminated by that fire. That's how big that fire is. And this has happened. This one happened. Al Imam al Nawi, alayhi rahmatullah, he mentions this in his book, Sharh uh, uh, Muslim. He says, I witnessed this myself. Eh, I witnessed this myself when we were in Sham, and one night there was a huge fire all the way east in Hijaz and we saw the camels were illuminated some of the signs like we said they have happened some of the signs are happening some of the signs are yet to happen one of the signs the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says uh, that he is one of the signs of the Day of Judgment he is one of the signs of the Day of Judgment why? Because he's the last prophet. He says, I, my sending as a messenger, my being sent as a messenger, and the hour is like these two fingers, very close. Huh? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, does, how does the Surah Tuqamar start? Allah says, the, the, the chapter called the chapter of the moon, Surah Al-Qamar. It starts, it says, Iqtarabati Sa'atu. The hour has come closer. When Shaq Al-Qamar and the moon was split. That was a sign. Hour is coming closer. The hour is coming closer. So if Allah said that, Ya Ikhwan, 1400 years ago, what about today? The point is, everyone should come closer to Allah. Remember, even if you want to witness any of those signs, there's that one which is waiting for you. Which is what? Your own death. And the scary part about death, it doesn't choose whether you're 19, whether you're 21, whether you're old, whether you're rich, you're poor, it doesn't choose. And what will benefit you are only your deeds. Only your deeds. This world is a real destruction. And that is the test we are being given. It's a destruction. You should have concerns. Yes, you should have concerns. 
you have to feed your family and this and that but don't forget your main concern don't forget your main concern how many people they died they were the richest people richest people and when they left they left with a cuff and a shroud which is cheaper than the clothes you are wearing right now and when they left people fought over the money they left and then they spent it in a few years and they, it all went he didn't benefit anything only if he had given before only if he had willed my money should go to the poor this much do for yourself do not expect anyone to do good after you Allah says آباؤكم وأبناؤكم لا تدرون أيهم أقرب لكم نفعا your children or your parents you don't know who is coming to benefit you more you don't know if they're going to benefit you or not you left wealth for them the test of wealth they forget you they won't even say you know this thousand dollars at least let's dig a well in Africa and the, and the, and the ajr the reward will go to our father no if you have now give you can pray now pray you can do dhikr now do dhikr you can make dua for yourself make dua for yourself you can teach teach before a time comes when you say ya laytani i wish yarhamkallah huh? ya laytani qaddamtu li hayati i wish i put forward during my life it's a serious matter ikhwan wallahi it's a serious matter those brothers in Palestine or in Syria or in uh, especially those in Syria and Iraq five ten years ago they didn't expect to be in the situation they are today they were living in a good life good life you understand good life just like me and you they had houses they had cars they had money in the bank they had jobs if it happened to them it can happen to us also Why you feel why why should we feel safe? Why should we feel safe? Why do you feel safe? Huh? Who are you? Who are us? What what do we have that we are special about? What makes us special? But we have that idea. We have that idea. Or oh, we think we are special. We are not special if you are far away from Allah. Allah does not care about us. If you are far away from Him. Remember, Allah does not need us. Allah does not need us. Remember that. Never forget that. We need Him. In yasha yudhibkum. When Allah, whenever Allah wants, He will take all of you away. Wa yati bi khalqin jadin will bring other people who will serve His din. People who really serve His din. You understand? Now we stop here. Tomorrow we discuss the. Khuruj al-Dajjal, the Dajjal coming out and uh, coming back of Isa ibn Maryam and the rest. And I know these are the things most of you love to hear, the Dajjal and we'll continue tomorrow. If you have questions, you come during Fajr or you send it as an email or you write it down. We can answer and you can look at the recording. You keep it here, we'll answer at Fajr. Zakallah khair. No, they just send it to influence, okay.